Hello and welcome back to Assetto Corsa Competizione, the official Blackpink GT series game in early access, as you can see, version 0.1.2. Uh, last time out, we were starting to get an understanding on how to make a car faster around a track or more to your liking. So, for example, for me, more to my liking and trying to understand how to get this car going around the track a little bit better. So, at the start, we did a baseline setup uh, where we took the car around and we got a feel for it. And I was complaining that there was a fair amount of understeer in it, particularly at the apex. Uh, but also on turning there was a bit of understeer and I really couldn't get that car going where I wanted it to go and it was slowing me down I was waiting for the throttle I was waiting to pick up the throttle by the end of that episode or by the end of that video uh, what stage did we get to we went from a was it a 204 is what we started with or two, 202 sorry we started with a 202 didn't we so we went from a 202 down two seconds to a two minutes so a two minutes point six or something so today we are going to be continuing with that and now I've enabled tire wear as well so what we're going to do is we're going to take this out for a couple of laps and then we are going to uh, see the tire wear and then start adjusting the pressures, the toe and the cambers on the wheels as well as maybe a little bit more on the aero and uh, I think maybe a little bit more on the roll bars or maybe a bit on the suspension as well. We might see what happens. Uh, if I start dropping this, it's going to make the car aerodynamically unstable, though, because of the bouncing. But uh, we'll see what happens, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Roll the intro. Alright, so here we are. And it's time for us to get a feel for this car. So, new session. Exactly the same conditions. We're going to be nice and easy on this first lap. Just get a feel for it, and then we're going to throw it around a little bit. See if we can get anywhere near that two minutes again. And it shouldn't be too difficult to get near that two minutes. Once we get ourselves up to up to speed, it should not be too hard to get up to that two minutes mark. Yes, it seems to be okay. Again, immediately I can feel that turning. Um, in the last video, at the start, that kind of turning that I just experienced, that would not have happened. This wouldn't have happened. I would have been sort of washing out already. But now I'm not, and that's really nice. So it's really great to experience that and actually see my setup working for me. It's, it's quite a nice feeling to, to be able to drive a car and see a setup working. I have to say, the force feedback on this is really nice. I can really feel every bump in my steering wheel very very nicely I can still got that mid corner oh sorry that apex at the high speed we've got that apex um, understeer I suppose that's what you'd call it so just at the apex I know I can feel understeer at high speed but still let's see what we can do shouldn't be too difficult This one seems okay, but I guess that's because it's uphill, we've got a bit more compression, I guess, in the wheel, so it's just sort of gripping in a little bit more. I feel like that might be the case with that one. So I can really pick up, now I can pick up the throttle much faster. So let's see what we get. We're aiming for about a two minutes, that would make sense to me. I think around the two minutes would make sense to me. Oh dear. That didn't work for us at all. Bit of snap over steer once again. Of course, new session. New session, getting back, uh, getting used to the car once again. So we are going to have to go ahead and abort this lap and do another lap. So that snap over steer was me just flicking the wheel a little bit too quickly in the opposite direction. Now with that, again, I think that I need to add in some more negative camber on the wheels, all around, really, to, to help me with that. So that, that kind of snap over steer, maybe with some negative camber, it might respond a little bit and actually grip in. Because at that point, it just snapped, and then I couldn't actually do anything. I'd lost traction. 
So let's see. Let's see what happens. There's that apex, that understeer. Just need to be careful of that. And it's not a it's not a nice place to be having that kind of understeer, I have to admit. It's gone from most of the corners, but in the high speed corners it's clearly still there. That was way off the line. It's okay, this lap's ruined anyway. We're probably looking at about 2 minutes 15 on this lap, if not more. I can go through that chicane a lot faster. Again, if I can get some response on it, um, just a bit more responsive handling, a bit more turning. I guess I could play around with the toe as well to do that. Uh, two minutes eight. Two minutes eight, okay. Let's go for a faster lap. This time without messing this part up. Just easy. There we go. That's pretty good. Again, that responsiveness. Just need to fix that up. So we're looking for two minutes, remember. Ooh, I can feel that car starting to slide. That's interesting. All right, we're about seven seconds up, so we're in the two minutes ones, I think. Yeah, we're in the two minute ones. So we really need to pick it up a little bit. Let's pick up the pace. We're still first session back in. I'm going to try and drop this to third and see what happens. Uh, nothing. It doesn't really make the slightest bit of a difference. Interesting. Okay, we're still about seven and a half seconds up, so we haven't had a great lap. I will say that, we haven't had a great lap at all. Let's see if we can gain anything at the chicane. There we go. Nope, not gaining anything at the chicane. As a matter of fact, we've lost time. 7.3. Two minutes, 1.083. Okay, that was four tenths. Four tenths slower than what we did in the last session. That's not too bad. I will say that's not too bad at all to be just four tenths down. And I'm sure I can gain that four tenths in just a couple of corners. So I'm definitely feeling this car responding a lot better. But as you can see, for example, there, you can see that understeer just there for demonstration. Uh, that was literally for demonstration, don't worry. Anyway, let's go back to the pit and let's see what we can do now. So, for me, I feel like I need to start increasing the cambers on all, all of these. So we need to add in more negative camber. So I'm actually going to go 3.8 on these and 3.6 on these. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to drop the pressures ever so slightly like so now looking at the shape of the circuit and the the design of the circuit realistically i think this tire here or these two tires can have more camber than these two because of the way it's going to be pushed around so that would work but as you can see if you have a look at that the wear from three so we're down 2.9 2.9 so we haven't done too badly on that so I think changing the camber should be pretty good for us um, pressures are fairly good this tire gets hot uh, on the outer these two tires get quite hot sorry on the inner so on the on the inside of their car because they do get very hot um, in fact those two tires run hot regardless so the limiting tire is actually that one that's our limiting tire. That's the one that's going to wear the most, most likely. So we need to we need to think about that. 
and potentially if we were to increase the camber on these two that would heat up these tiles would heat up but then it would be more equal heating you see so that's that's the idea that's my thought process that's what i'm thinking of doing but let's try this one so we've messed around with the camber let's see what we can get so we're after, uh, let's try and get below two minutes. That's what we're really after. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to mess around with the ride height a little bit more. And then we'll see what happens from there. Hello. That feels good. Okay, that, that change of the camber is allowing this car to turn in. A lot more responsibly. Oh, but it does have, it has introduced some oversteer. So, what do I need to do to get rid of oversteer? Probably drop the rear AR. Yeah, I'll need to drop the rear ARB. But that's going to then start introducing understeer mid apex once again. So, again, it's all about compromising and really understanding where things are going to go. And I suppose. If I want to increase that turning, I still need to... This feels a lot nicer. I feel like I could even change the camera out further. Oh, it's so much more responsive through the Schumacher S. But it does require playing with the throttle a lot more. I'm no longer just... I don't have my foot flat to the floor anymore. All the way through. I'm lifting off just a little bit here and there. Still a bit of understeer. See, that's what I'm worried about now. Now, maybe if I drop the nose a little bit more. So, I've not really set up GT3 cars before. Um, but the, the same principle should apply all the way through. That feels good. Good pickup on the throttle. Let's see what we get. Why did it do that? Turn it in. I'm surprised we're not faster. I would have thought we would be faster, but we're not. Why are we not faster? We should definitely be faster here. I can feel this. The car feels so much nicer. I feel like maybe I've just got a bad line this this way, or this time around. The car just it responds so much more. We should definitely be going faster. Okay, there we go. Now we're starting to increase. Now our delta's going into the green. Maybe I can stop braking. Yep, I think I can stop braking later as well. Okay, we're only a tenth up. That's not quite what I was after, but... There we go. 0.3 of a second. We can definitely carry more speed through the Schumacher S now. And pick up the throttle earlier here. We can ride it out a little bit more. And this one. Ooh. Careful there on the gear change. Half a second. Now we're starting to see the benefits of that camber change. I can ride the car out a lot more. It can go out on the curbs a bit more. It's a bit more responsive. What I will say is it's a lot more alive. But now it's understeering a bit through here. But still... Oh, just. We need to improve that. I think we can. I think we can improve that. I think we can get into the 159s with this setup as it is. Because that is so much more responsive now. Turn it in and pick up the throttle. There we go. A little bit of oversteer on it. 
But I think we can get into the 159s. And it's not as uh, it's not terrible actually uh, when it comes around when it comes into those corners and you're changing gear and you're changing direction sort of change of direction now is a lot nicer it just feels a lot nicer now which is why I can take this a lot faster than I could before admittedly that was a, a few hundredth slower but still you know what I mean you can take this a lot faster than you could oh that's that's ruined everything um, what I am going to say is that even when it started stepping out on me I was able to catch it so that's also a positive let's try and Take, carry some good speed through there. That was actually some very good speed. Although we messed it up at the end. That's good for the next lap, though. We've got we've straightened up the car more for the next lap. I'm not sure. I think we did. We just do that last lap exactly the same. Not exactly the same. And you can see the car trying to rotate very quickly. But now, the thing is. At this point, I can tell you that this car is starting to feel like it's on the edge. And that's really nice to feel on a car. To feel that a car is like it's on the edge is very, very nice. There we go. Just trying to open up that corner a little bit more than we used to because I've got that ability now to change the direction of the car. So by opening up the corner more than we used to, we can put a bit more into it. It's still not that much faster, but now I think this is more down to my driving um, as opposed to the car's responsiveness. I feel that the car does want to respond to what I'm doing, and it's just I need to now improve my driving to make sure that I can cope with that. That was slow. That one was slow. Still slow. Hmm. We will get the 159. I'm thinking of putting a bit more negative camber in, to be honest. I am thinking of putting a bit more negative camber into this. It feels like it could really do with it. Oh, that's a shame. That's going to be a shame. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go back to the setup. And for the last change that I'm going to make in this video, uh, we're going to do a couple of changes. We're going to do that. I want a better, more stable rear end. Oh, actually, we'll just do that. No, sorry, that. More stable rear end, but I did find that we need to sort this out. So I'm going to drop that uh, over there. So that was that's basically to try and fix uh, the issues that I was having with the um, what do you call it? Come on, words, words. You know what, the words aren't going to come to my head right now. Um, uh, apex, that's it, the, the understeer at the apex. So I'm wondering if that's going to uh, help that out a little bit. Was it the understeer at the apex I was looking for? No, that would be up. Understeer at the apex would be up. So that's not right. Uh, what did I want it for? There was a reason I wanted that. And I did mention it whilst I was doing it. So anyway, we'll just do that in general but also let me think I think that it feels okay how's it the wear looks pretty good though or overall the wear looks really nice so 
What if I did that? In fact, forget that. What if I did that? That would be an interesting setup. Because those are going to heat up a little bit more now. That one doesn't heat up that much at all. This is going to be an interesting setup. So to finish this video, I've actually adjusted the camber so they're asymmetric. Um, and I'm actually going to drop. Oh, I can't drop those any lower. Okay, well, that's what I'm going to put. Um, what if I then increase the anti-roll bar at the front? Because that will stop any oversteer that I'm probably going to get now with the odd camber. But I'm not having oversteer. Did I get any oversteer on turn entry? I'm just thinking. Uh, yes, I did get a little bit. I did get a little bit. So maybe that's going to be what I need to help me out. So let's try that and see if we can dip into the 159s with that to end this episode. This is going to be interesting. I'm just trying to remember some places where I could feel the oversteery nature of the car. There it is. It's still there. It is still there. But that's a lot more point and... I suppose it's, uh, in terms of throttle, it's just point and squares, isn't it? You just point where you want to go and hit the throttle. Although that's not what you really do. Um, when you're racing cars, you've got to be progressive. You can't just put your foot straight down and straight up. I have to admit that I think maybe my force feedback settings are a little, a little bit on the high side because either that or the leather on my steering wheel is wearing out because it is starting to make my hands hurt. So I don't think I've got the most, the nicest of grips anymore. The steering wheel is very old, so I suppose that's bound to happen. When did I get this? Probably 2011. So I guess that's what's starting to happen. Yes. That is that is a mid-apex... Or, sorry, mid-apex? Yes, no, mid-corner. That is apex understeer seems to be gone. At least on that corner on that lap maybe maybe on another lap we'll find out on the next lap whether it's back or whether that was just me lucking out or the speed of i don't know we'll find out responsiveness is great now this car feels like it wants to race before it felt sluggish and you know you guys just watching these two videos, you probably can't really tell that much in the way of difference. But uh, I can tell you there is a significant difference in these two cars. And hopefully you guys can see uh, on screen the different inputs that I'm having to put. Uh, two cars, well what I meant is the car from its initial setup to what it is now. Hopefully you guys can see the inputs that I'm having to put and the way it's changed how I'm actually driving and also definitely the enjoyment factor of this I'm definitely enjoying driving this car a lot more now than I did when it was in its default setup so there is that as well that can be taken into consideration oh that's a mistake by me that was definitely a mistake by me but look at that the car responded and I've managed to still not lose that much time and that's impressive the car is actually able to respond and then keep going let's see what we get out of the Schumacher S now flat through that slow though again I think now it's going to be down to practicing on this new setup getting a few good laps in and just getting a feel to make sure it's okay for us. Because I feel like this setup is faster. I feel, I do genuinely feel like this setup is faster. And 
with a bit more tweaking. I know I'm not even into the 159s yet, but I'm fairly certain that this setup will be not only 159s, but taking me on towards the 158s. And I'm not that good at a driver because I don't have that much time to do what, you know, I don't have that much time to play this title or any racing title. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't call myself a, a very experienced uh, or accomplished driver. I'd just say that I am an okay driver. Definitely lost time there, but started to immediately gain it back bit early on that apex you know the funny thing about that is since I was young I've always done that I've always made that same mistake on that corner and I just have never got around to correcting myself I really should do that I really should have a look at that corner and get that get that going correctly Okay, that's interesting. That was a bit of understeer that I didn't expect to get. So maybe we're not completely done with this setup. I don't think we're completely done with this setup yet. No, we're not completely done with the setup, but we are done with this video, I think. So that's where I'm going to look at that. That's lovely. That's a bit wide. But we are very close on our best time. But this car feels like it can go faster. And it's just me now. So maybe I just need to be quiet for a bit and drive the car. We're still in the two minutes. I do want to get, before the end of this episode, I really, really want to get down into the 159s because I know I can. I know the 159 is possible. I just have to be really smooth on this car. And that's something that I'm missing right now, is I can tell I'm not as smooth as I need to be on this car. Ah, now that is an interesting wash out there. I was not expecting the car to wash out like it did, going into that corner. So maybe, yeah, maybe there is still a little bit of work to do, as I said. In fact, I think there is a little bit of work to do in this car. Because after changing all of that, the car does feel still a little bit sluggish at the back but we are m managing to make it and so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully it started to help you guys who maybe want to start doing setups but aren't too sure where to actually begin uh, that's given you a few pointers on where you can start and maybe where you can make up some time so i've definitely made up time from you know the, the last video to now we've definitely managed to make up time and if we can get into the 159s that's going to be an increase i think I think it's an overall increase of about four seconds, but I'm not too sure. There's a bit of trail breaking there. That feels good. That does feel good. Now this car is starting to feel more alive. So what this car really looks like it wants is it wants to be slid, uh, which is great. So I need to try and dial out some of that sliding because when it's sliding, it feels like it's more alive. So we're going to see if we can dial some of that out and we'll see if we can move on from there. But for now, this is a good place for me to end. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. On a set of course, a competency only as it goes through the, um, the early access period. Leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think. If you've got any more suggestions, I'm sure I've missed a couple of things, probably obvious ones, that would help me tune this car and get another second or two seconds out of it but um i'm sure i'll figure it out in time and obviously tuning a car takes a very very long time you can do this for hours and hours and hours on end uh, i've only been doing this for what 20 minutes 20 minutes in this video and 20 minutes in the last video so you know th there is that to also consider 
Uh, if you're not following me on Twitch, or if you're not watching this on Twitch, do please consider following me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ecgadget. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. would really, really help me out. Uh, that was a really poor corner. That was very, very poor for me. I'm actually ashamed of myself right there. Uh, also, you can support me on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash ecgadget. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated on that. Any amount of money will, of course, help me create better videos and better content for you guys uh, overall and maybe just improve the experience for you guys. So, yes, please do consider doing that. Also, you can follow me on social media, so you'll find me at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. That's all from me, and I think I'm going to just go around driving this for a while now. I'll probably see you guys next time in a set of course. I was doing really well. I was three tenths up at the start of the lap, I thought. Now I'm a tenth down, but I'll see you guys next time in a set of course. Competizione. I'll tell you what, I'll finish this lap off. Let's see if we can do anything with it. Nothing. It's very close. It's very, very close. Uh, unfortunate. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next time.